Hey guys, what's up? I've been trying to do a top 10 fighting games based on JRPGs for a long time. Three years ago I made a little video about that, but not enough games were there. So today I decided to bring that old video back and include four more games to finally complete my top 10 fighting games based on JRPGs. So let's begin! Alright, first on the list, Dissidia Final Fantasy. So there's three games so far of this fighting series with RPG elements. The first one came out back in 2008 in Japan and 2009 everywhere else. I'm not quite sure what they were trying to do here, since it's a mixture of everything and I found that tedious. I was looking forward to this first game on the PSP as back then, I was still a big fan of the franchise. But when I played it, I realized I wasn't exactly playing a true fighting game, but an experiment of some sorts in 3D that I just couldn't get into. A second game was released in 2011 with even more RPG elements. I remember the exploration in this game since I tried that part with a bunch of characters and thought the interface was kinda nice. The fighting part had improved, however it was still messy when it came to its battle mechanics. I wasn't exactly fond of these long and giant battle maps, to be honest. And jumping and flying around... Yeah, not my thing. I felt like playing a Super Smash game and I'm not even a fan of those games either. I don't even want to talk about the newest Dissidia since I freaking hated it. These games might be awesome for some people, as I can truly see what appeals to them, but they're just definitely not for me. They're not bad games at all, but I just can't feel them as true fighting games. Tales of Versus We all know the PSP was sort of experimental when it came to video games, which might be the reason why some fighting games based on JRPGs were released here. Tales of Versus, however, was never localized outside Japan. It was developed by the usual staff from Namco Tales Studio, with help from Matrix Software. That's right, the creators of Alundra. The game has a story mode, but since I don't understand Japanese, I couldn't get into it at all. I tried the arcade mode then, and I gotta say, I wasn't impressed. It was also like Super Smash Bros, but fully in 2D, jumping around and across platforms. Yep. What I did like was that it resembled the battle system in games like the original Tales of Symphonia, as I felt I was playing just that. Combat was messy but fun at the same time, with the option to use artists just like any normal Tales of. You've got only a few characters to choose from at the beginning, but if you play the story mode, you start unlocking all the others. Overall, it was a good game, but I feel they could have done much better. I still regret we didn't get it though. However, after playing it for a while, I believe we actually didn't miss much. Next up, Pokken Tournament. Let's take a break from the PSP and talk about Pokemon. Yeah, you guys know I'm not into that franchise, but I gotta admit, this fighting game was freaking awesome! It was another game developed by Namco in a Tekken style by the team who makes those games, hence the name Pokken. There's a story mode where you do a bunch of things, but since I'm not into Pokemon I totally skipped it. I went then to the battle mode so I could try the normal fighting game at its core. It's 3D battle styled, although I've never been much of a fan of 3D fighting games to be honest. Then they go into this 2D battle mode. I never knew why it did that or what caused the game to turn into 2D, but I actually enjoy that feature. Tekken is highly technical and a little bit slow, but here gameplay was fluid and characters were fast. Although the same way you make combos in Tekken, you make them here. In the end, Pokken Tournament is a pretty fun game and I recommend it to any lover of the genre. Trust me, it will surprise you. 
and I know there's a Switch version of this game out there already, but I haven't played it. Next up we've got East vs Sora no Kiseki Alternative Saga, or pretty much East vs Trails in the Sky. Yes, this game exists, oh yeah, they made a fighting game of these two amazing franchises. And yeah, we're back at the PSP with two more games. So one is yet another title that was never released outside Japan. And this one I truly regret it since it was a much better game than Tales of Versus in my opinion. Story felt lackluster with so little dialogue, but that was okay since it's a damn fighting game. I did try this mode for a while, without understanding a single thing of course, but I got my ass kicked in a boss fight. This game is brutal. I assume it's on normal difficulty by default, and I never knew how to change that, but I clearly remember having a lot of issues with it. It's really tough. Also, it's basically East 7 vs Trails in the Sky, since it uses the characters from both games specifically. Other characters from other East games can be eventually unlocked, but at first you're stuck with the most popular. Fighting is done in a top-down view with battle mechanics almost directly copied from most East games. Characters move around and attack quite fast, so it's sometimes hard to land some hits or maneuver around. You can also jump and dash, but you're stuck here in these small maps, which totally work much better for me. This game is not one of the best fighting games ever made or anything, but I would have loved to get it with an English release, as it is very fun to play. We probably didn't get it because back in 2010, none of these series were as popular as they are today. And actually, the same goes for the Tales of games. Number 6. Dot Hack vs. Hard to believe this forgotten series has a fighting game, huh? Again, only in Japan. However, the story behind this one is very weird. It was released alongside a Blu-ray movie called Dot Hack Beyond the World. This is the second movie based on the series. Well, that same Blu-ray disc is actually a hybrid since it also contains this very same game. So obviously you needed to buy the movie to be able to play this game on your PS3. It's a 3D fighter with great visuals and great controls, a mix between technical supers and awesome combos. Not exactly a button masher if that's what you're thinking. However, there's barely any playable characters and that's the second downer here, the first one being its weird ass exclusivity on a movie of all things. There's two characters from GU, Haseo and Novan, two from the original four games, Kite and Black Rose, and four from the animes and movies. This roster is extremely lame considering how much potential the game had. It was a great attempt to make a good fighter out of a legendary series, but it completely turned out to be a wasted opportunity. If by mere chance you find a way to play this game, do it as its gameplay is pretty damn good. Number 5. Far East of Eden Kabuki Clash I could have picked any of the fighting games based on JRPGs that are exclusive to Japan. I chose this one because it's good and it did come out to North America and Europe on the Neo Geo and the arcade, although the JRPG it's based on stayed in Japan. Graphics, art style and colors are the perfect example of 90s fighters inspired by Street Fighter 2, although the gameplay and controls of this game remind me way more to games like the original Samurai Shodan releases. It belongs to a series called Tengai Makio, the majority of them being JRPGs. Ironically, this is the only game that's ever been released outside Japan. Both its arcade release and its Neo Geo port are just as great, with excellent combat. I just wish we could have gotten at least one of the RPGs the game's based on, but back in the mid 90s it was relatively hard for every JRPG to be localized. Give this one a try if you can, it's definitely worth checking out. Ok, here's Spectral vs Generation. Yes, there is a fighting game based on these two totally underrated and overlooked franchises. And yes, it's also on the PSP. And no, it never came to North America. It was released in Europe though, both for the PSP and the PS2 actually. I only play the PSP version since I found it once when I was in the UK. The PSP is region free, so I had no problems playing it. I gotta say, I love the heck out of this game. 
there isn't a story mode, it's just fighting in arcade or versus mode like fighting games, most of the fighting games from the 90s as a matter of fact. You think because of the 2D style and fast-paced combat this would be a game done by Arc System Works, but it is not. It was developed by both Idea Factory, owner of both series, and IGS. Either way, it played like most King of Fighters games, or even Guilty Gear, and I absolutely adored that. I'm a huge 2D fighting fan, so this game did not disappoint in any way. Especially since I could play with Hero, my favorite character in the series. No guys or girls from the series that were actually released in North America, sadly. So you'll be stuck playing mostly with characters you don't even know. But that shouldn't turn you off, since it's still a great fighting game, one of the best based on JRPGs. Moving on to number 3 with Blade Arcus from Shining EX. This is an excellent fighter based on the Shining series and one of my personal favorites in this list, but it's a Japanese exclusive. Well, good thing your PS3 and 4 are region free, right? Or you could just stick with the Steam version called Battle Arena, which was released worldwide back in 2016. I'm showing you footage of the PS4 version, but you can clearly see it's pretty much a direct port from the original PS3 release. The first iteration came out exclusive to Japan on the arcade, only with characters from Shining Blade and Shining Hearts. Those PSP games, you guessed it, never left their country of origin. New characters were added to the version I'm covering today, and there was later another update called Rebellion, released on PS4 and Switch. Obviously, the majority of these characters come from the Japanese exclusive Shining games, which is frustrating, but maybe that's why most of its versions weren't released anywhere else. I wish it could have included characters from the games we did get, especially from the Shining Force main series. But since I love 2D fighters that perfectly mix technical moves and button mashing combos, I'll forgive it. Most moves are simple and easy to understand with support characters and specials like in most fighters of its kind. It includes a story mode, but it's bare bones as usual, but I guess it stands out for having a lot of fan service. Give this one a try if you can, as it's really good. I just hope you can find any console version for cheap. Number 2, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. Grand Blue Fantasy started back in Japan with an iOS JRPG released in 2014. Three years later, the game got its own anime series with two seasons, and in 2020, Arc System Works developed the very same fighting game you're seeing right now. It also includes a small action RPG that plays great like a beat-em-up. The arcade mode obviously is the star of today's show with beautiful visuals, awesome music and excellent controls. You need to create several different attacks by combining buttons or focusing on just one, so it's a bit of an experimental button measure with a twist, one that can get somewhat technical to your advantage. Specials are called Skybound Arts here and can be easily triggered with one button, but they have a cooldown of course. I love how each of its initial 12 characters controls very differently. Others can be unlocked by defeating the main story or by purchasing their DLC. This is a strongly recommended game, definitely among the best in this list. If you're interested in knowing more about the RPG mode of this game, I'll leave a video at the end where I covered it. Last but not least, Persona 4 Arena and Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. These two games are by far my absolute favorite fighting games of all time and also by far the best in this video. I knew I was gonna love them both even before I played them. I started with the original and it had Labrys as the new main character in this Persona 3 and 4 crossover, but mainly focusing on the Persona 4 cast. And yes, I beat the game with every single one of them. It plays like a visual novel with tons of dialogue and writing on the screen, which I admit was kinda overwhelming at times. Nevertheless, the story was totally worth it. The fighting is done in 2D, developed by Arc System Works, but mostly like the Blast Blue games. It is simply fantastic. You can make combos, all in your usual fast-paced combat, but also summon your personas to abuse the system. Using these skills can totally turn the battle in your favor, but they're not unlimited, so you better watch out. 
Ultimax was an amazing experience as well, however there's two major differences here. Story is much shorter and faster, still told in a visual novel style but with less tedium. I don't know, I found that to be weaker. I love the first game's story far more than in this one, but the combat here feels improved and obviously better. Difference isn't that much, but I prefer the battle system in this game. It also has more characters and therefore more routes to choose from, although you play them all in one playthrough. In any case, both games are equally amazing and any fan of the fighting games should definitely give them a try. They are, without a doubt, my favorite fighting games ever.